Reverend John Benke, record 21574 to be announced. The following program was produced by students in telecommunicative arts at Iowa State University. The facilities used were those of television station WOI-TV in Ames, Iowa. Frazier, Iowa, nine miles northeast of Boone. Population, 143. There's one old church, no parking meters. In fact, the main street, Bruce Street, is still gravel. And if you look closely, you'll find the rings for the horses still mounted in the concrete walk in front of Frazier's single business, the tavern. This is the stuff that city dwellers make jokes of, the tiny backwoods Iowa hamlet that time and civilization seem to have overlooked. But Fraser isn't just another farmer's village that never grew up. In fact, at the turn of the century, many a self-respecting farmer probably wouldn't have even ventured to show his face in Fraser. It wasn't a town built by farming. It was built by coal mining. And like so many mining towns, it led a brief and furious life. Nestled in a crook of the Des Moines River, Fraser was platted in 1893, and nine years later, in 1904, it had swelled to a population of over 1,200, and just 10 years later, it was declared all but dead. At its peak, its hillsides were covered with company houses, its streets were lined with saloons, as well as stores, and believe it or not, Right here in central Iowa, this town had a black population large enough to support its own all-black church. What were times like back then? Let's listen to a man who lived there. Of course, they cut that in the south, you know. And they, of course, the south was down soon, sir. But the colored folks, when they want to get on the levee, and they talk about the levee down there. That's these eight or nine saloons in a row down there. And a lot, a lot of trouble around there. I've seen several guys killed there, and, uh... Yeah, what happened? No, they didn't do nothing. They didn't do nothing. nothing no punishment for killing a man in them days. That sounds like crazy, but I knew, I knew the, I know, uh, old happy Jim Price, a big, tall, slim, colored man, and he killed Tom Albright, and I knowed him well, and he, Dick, Jim killed him. And he got away, and they didn't catch him right then, but he got out of Frazier and went down a little mining town, and they picked him up, oh, two or three weeks after that. Picked Jim up, had a trial down there, and they gave him 30 days for carrying a gun, shooting in the city of and didn't say nothing about killing Tom. Unfortunately, very little of what Frazier was can be found in books. The respectable historians of the time choose to apologize for, or perhaps even ignore the goings-on in this booming coal mine town. Even though the historians didn't write about it, the life in Fraser can still be found in the memories of the people who are old enough to remember it. For the next half hour, we plan to listen to the citizens of Fraser tell their stories, and we'll see if we can't recapture the flavor of this dwindling giant. This, what I ask of you, to loose the fetters of injustice, to set free those who have been crushed, to break every yoke. Is it not to share thy bread with the hungry, to take the homeless poor into your house, and always care for your brother? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and soon you will grow healthy like a wound newly healed. The Campaign for Human Development, United States Catholic Conference. If you're traveling through Fraser today and ask someone what there is to see, the first thing they'll probably ask you is whether or not you've been out to see Milton Lott's grave. 
On a gravel road just east of Fraser, this historic landmark commemorates the death of 12-year-old Milton Lott. The cabin of Henry Lott and his family was built in the middle of Sacred Sioux hunting grounds. In January of 1847, a small band of braves came and told the Lots to leave. They refused, and the Indians started to ransack the farmstead. Little Milton was able to flee to the woods, but he froze to death there. That's Fraser's historic landmark. But all that happened 50 years before Fraser existed. What we're looking for won't be found carved in stone, as it were. Boom towns were never noted for their permanence, and the things that were important to Fraser are to a large extent no longer around. Therefore, facts about Fraser must be pieced together from recollections. It is at this point in the research that a friendly chat over a beer is the most abundant source of information. There are a lot of things to talk about, but one of the first things to come up in the conversation is what it is like to live in Fraser back when the mines and railroads were running and there were hundreds of miners looking for something to do at night, like going to the bars. Pretty rough town when it was uh, really thriving back then. Oh, worse than that. Worse than rough. And my dad came from Virginia to Illinois, and there he sent for my mother, and they moved here to Fraser, and there's where all of us children was born here in Fraser, 11 of us, eight left living. And he was afraid to go out on his own doorsteps at night, afraid somebody would be shooting at somebody else and shoot him. And they were fighting, have dancers over here at the Miner's Hall, and next thing you know, big gang fights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope to tell you, rough. Uh, I used to get down on the levee, a purpose to watch them fight over Saturday night. It always wound up in a blow or two down there, and I was just a kid, and I didn't miss nothing. And I'm going to watch it. And uh, them saloon keepers, they run them, suit themselves. They don't do like, like they do now. Most of them saloon keepers, they had a... Well, the first thing they had, they opened all their beer with a tag, you know, and they had a beer mallet. That laid under the counter, too. That's a nice thing to hit them by the head with. And there's a, a forty-five gun in there, too. And they run the saloon themselves, and the, most of the people knew that they was running it. You didn't go in there and start no ruckus and tear up their joint, because they did, they packed you out. And they, uh... Had a gun fighting, too? Oh, yeah. Everybody carried a gun at that time. Well, I did myself most of the time. I don't know what for, but I had one, a little bootleg gun of some kind. Unlike a lot of Iowa towns, the people of Fraser came from many different backgrounds and from all over the world. It couldn't be called a Norwegian town, or a German town, or a Russian town. These were all just subdivisions of the Fraser population. The black population of Fraser was perhaps the most remarkable. It might never have existed had it not been for a minor strike around the turn of the century. Instead of giving in to the strikers' demands, the mining companies brought in carloads of black workers from the south. This, of course, led to some racial unrest, but things sort of straightened themselves out. At any rate, the arrival of the black families, there came to be a concentration of black people like the rest of Iowa had never seen. The folks around Fraser still like to tell about how their little town was the only one around that had its own all-black church. With the growth in population came a growth in industry. A tile plant opened up that supplied drainage tile to a large portion of central Iowa. And with coal and tile to distribute, the railroad soon had a busy network of tracks running from the mines and brickyards to the mainline rails of the M and St. L and the Newton and Northwestern lines. Train engine, a needed power plant was built. It remained in operation until 1957. Most of the machinery has been removed since then, but the crumbling remains of the building can still be seen. It's one remaining smokestack towering above the trees. What did Fraser look like back when all six or seven mines were running and the town was thriving? Well, the answer to that question depends upon just who you're asking. Depending on what year they're talking about, the various stores seem to move around a bit, but in general it was something like Outside this. Outside of the main street there, you see there was town, houses built all over down there. Rows of houses built there along down in there, right south of Fraser there, clear along and come up above the powerhouse. The old company houses. And the colored folks all lived above the powerhouse in there along the hillside. Not as cool down there. <laughs> and then on top of the hill, the Italians lived up there, and out of Hunk Town, you know. And part of them, uh, 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 Josie, uh, the lady that lives up there yet, 
<laughs> she was born and raised up there. She comes up. She was up here yesterday. Up here about every day. And Duke Payne was. He wasn't born down there. That's Rusha Town, where he was, where he lives now. But he's lived there since a little kid. He, he was born up up town there, uh, along the main, uh, just uh, the west end of the main street. Well, it looks just say oh, there was a lot of buildings, but you see, I can remember when all these buildings. This was lined up as buildings all the way down through here. There used to be an old uh, miners. Uh, uh, it was a hall right across here of miners. Mm -hmm. And then the, the next building was a post office and a store. And the next building was a was a barber shop. And then the next one down was a pool hall and a post office too. You see, but they had a two. They had a, another post office up this way. But they had papers and stuff down to this other. And so this other one closed down. And then the post office went down to that one. And then down the street a little farther, there was a hotel. My uncle used to run the hotel. And then down it was a kind of a oh. We buy medicine and stuff, you know, it uh, was a, a drugstore, a drugstore down. And across the street from the drugstore was the jail, and uh, and then they had another drugstore over there. And then up the street a little ways, there was a, there was a hardware, I mean a pool hall and a beer joint. And what did this place look like? What was this building back then? It was a, it just looked about the same as it always had, but only they did tear off. The stairs used to go down on the outside out there, you see. There used to be stairs on the outside all the way down into the street, and there was an alleyway. And then there was a, there was a nice station up in the back there, you see, uh, ice, uh, where they used to put up ice all the time for these stores and stuff. And then there was a nice house down below here. Did the bar looked the same now as it did then? No, the, they didn't have a bar. They had a store out of this at that time. And, uh, and a clothing store in this part, and, uh, and uh, groceries over here. And then they delivered with horses. And tie that, you can see the rings is out there on the sidewalk. Was it a pretty big town back then? Well, it ranked next to Boone in size and population. But Boone's grown so much since. That's saying a lot for Fraser. Terrible lot. Yes, sir. And all these stores, barber shop, too. An undertaking parlor upstairs in this Watson grocery store next to this one. Yeah. Not very many buildings left now. No, no. All the houses, those little houses and all, coal mine and camp, and, and uh, the people had to trade at the store, you know, where the coal mine had credit for them. And every one of them's gone. You'd be surprised the houses that were here. Even down on the brink of the hill, right up here. And they had saloons, too. Over the hill, they call them blind pigs. Yeah, there was uh, the, um, saloons run down there. And there was uh, there was uh, two big hotels down there. And the uh, Donahue and the Hotel and the Myers Hotel. And the one drugstore. And that drugstore was the only place they had any pavement in Fraser. At that time, he, old, uh, uh, Fred Elliott, he put a little paper in front of his drugstore walker, and that's it. The rest of them, mud and cinders and board once in a while. That's about as far as urban improvement got. By 1912, the mines had been worked out, and business in Fraser slowly ground to a halt. The mines closed down, and the tile shed closed down. And then the railroad closed down. You see, I don't know why, but that it just faded out, and the people moved out and left, and, and part of them died. Well, there is no work here. Uh, no work. You know, the mines quit, and the power plant quit. And I've seen that power plant build from a small place, and Morris Phipps seen it, uh, or was here before it. And they had a tile factory west of it. And that employed a lot, yeah. And after they quit, the power plant, well, we had a flood, the biggest flood I ever seen here, that washed out the bridge right down below me. That's the reason this one down below. You can see the pair of that, and it washed out the Wilson Bridge. And uh, so uh, there's just nothing left for nobody to do. And the biggest share of the Frasier is moving out and seem like new moving in because taxes are cheap here. Well, 
I'd like to told you now, part of the town, part of the, the part of the people down there, I don't know them. I never heard of them. They're strangers from in your sense. The one, the people I used to know are gone. And uh, anybody that, uh, my, anywhere near my age, you know, that I used to know when I was younger, well, they've been dead for years. And they've moved out, but there ain't many, many people left. What but brings the people back in here? Well, they, they, I don't know. But, well, uh, they get out of town. Big town. Cities, most of it. What do you, what's there left to do in town now? Uh, with just the one... The pressure? Yeah. Nothing. Uh, they, they ain't no industry at all down there anymore. How about, uh, what do people do for having a good time? Tavern still open? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> It's about like it was then. You can strike, you can find most anything you're looking for. You're looking for a fight. You can find it down there yet, I guess. I used to, I know, when I was young. I used to hang around on purpose to watch that. And Everybody was... gather in the tavern down there, do they? Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course, they don't, they ain't rough like, there's no gun play anymore, like they used to be. Of course, the colored folks were bad about that. They all carried a gun, and a lot of the white folks did, too. And they, there's quite a lot of killings down there, shooting. And, but that's all over with. They don't do that no more. They do, too, in places, I guess. <laughs> Just cities. They're rough places in the, in the cities now. The roughest place you can find in Fraser today is probably the tavern. And that's not rough at all. People drop in to play cards, shoot pool, have a beer, and just talk. We asked what it was like to live in Fraser now. You can't beat it, I'll tell you, you can't beat it. You, you don't have to worry about nothing. Your kids can go out, you don't have to worry about them getting in trouble or nothing like that. Like it is in the big city, you know, anymore. You know how people are in that. Uh, it ain't that way in a lot of times. But in here, these kids can go out and play around and do uh, just what they want to, you know, and they come in back in. And that's, you know, there's no trouble, whatever. Pretty fine bunch of people, though. Oh, shoot. Sickness? Or anything happen, just see how quick they come. We're colored. Don't mean a thing to them. Right there to see what they can do and help. Death in the family. Yeah, anything. Yeah. Yes, sir. Do you like living here? Oh, I love it. My sisters, and that loves the city. Because they their jobs are there and that. And... But, you know, you can throw a handful of beans out one window here and watch them grow on your fishing line out the other and catch a fish. And in the city, you can't do that, and I love gardening, too. People have been saying that Fraser is dead or dying now for some 60 years, but it's still around. We asked Duke Payne if it might come back someday. You think, uh, you think it's coming back? You think the town's coming back? I, uh, I don't know how it could. Unless something would happen here, some factory or something turn up, and I just don't look for it to. And it's grown up into wilderness now. Houses used to be from ours up to the corner and down that way, and, and another grocery store beside this one, and post office down there, and store over there, and pool halls. And they finally ended up there at the post office. Now there's not, not even an oil station. Morris Phipps doesn't see it quite that way, though. In fact, he's optimistic. Well, that town is, yeah. It's hold, like I told you, it's holding it on. The first thing they ever had down there is a saloon, and they still got it, so I guess you'd call that holding its own. I don't know. What that <laughs> <is>. <laughs> it, it looks just about like it did then. What Only do you think going to happen to it now? Huh? What's going to happen to it now? Well, it's building up a little. It's coming back again. That is, they're... There's several people that are built, building houses back out there again, and I don't know what it's going to come to. I can't, but I think, yeah, I think it's going to get to be quite a deal here before it's over with. Um, I don't, I won't say it, but then it'll build back up. I don't think it'll ever die. It's the cocktail hour at Bill and Helen's. Martinis for two. Actually, it isn't quite the cocktail hour, and actually, Bill isn't home yet. Oh, he should be along soon. Since the kids have grown up, Helen feels a little lost, lonely. So sometimes when she's low, she has a drink or two while she's waiting for Bill and the cocktail hour. Right now, alcohol is not Helen's big problem. Loneliness is. But if she doesn't find another answer, she's going to have another problem. Helen could become alcoholic American number nine million and one.
for a free booklet about drinking problems, write alcohol. Box 2345, Rockville, Maryland, 20852. It may help you help someone. We've been listening to the facts and stories of Fraser's history. Now let's just add music and take a fond last look at the sights and sounds of Fraser, Iowa, the dwindling giant. With a, that big elm tree. Been a lot of beer drank under that tree. Mm -hmm. that church himself. And I don't just little kid we pack lumber over the old man. 
Do some of the people here drive to Boone and work, or mostly farmers? No, this is not a farmer's car. Not a farmer's car. Does everybody do? Come and went there, you know, and lived a little while. 